Well, hello everyone and welcome to Color Readerville. Today I have a video review of the Walla Walla 120 color dual tip brush pens. All right, so now I'm going to be really honest about how all this unfolded. I was actually contacted by the company which asked me would I take a look at these pens, markers, and do a review, share these um, with my viewers here and um, show you you know, how they operate and things like that. I was very reluctant to agree to do this because in the past I have purchased um, pens very similar to these that I absolutely hated and I would never, ever, ever, ever recommend to anyone. So I was really, really hesitant um, after I explained to the company that uh, number one, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give an honest review of your product to my subscribers. I'm not going to um, do a uh, quick little review that says these things are wonderful, purchase, purchase, push it out there. Um, I let them know, warning, this is going to be an honest review. That is the only type of reviews I do. That's why I'm usually kind of picky about what I um, do actually review because I don't think it's necessarily fair if I don't understand something or if I don't like something to say, oh, this is horrible. Don't buy this. And then there's, um, you know, a video on YouTube where someone's saying this is a horrible product. Don't buy this. So, you know, I, I kind of try to steer clear of products that I know I'm just going to absolutely hate or questionable products and try to focus in on products that really are interesting to me and are something I wanted to show to you. But I, I did need to let this company know that if you want me to receive these and review these, it's going to be an honest review. So, and they agreed to that. So that's wonderful. So I did receive these from Walla Walla and they asked me to take a look at them and, you know, let's do just that. I actually took some time last night and I swatched these out and I did a little bit of coloring with them and things like that because I wanted to get a good feel for these before I brought them to you because of my history with these type of pens. And I, you know, I wanted to be able to give them a 100% fair shake. Not only did I want to see what the swatch looked like, I wanted to see how the pens handled, how the brushes handled, how the fine liner handled, and of course, what the finished product looked like. And okay, so I'm ready now. I've done that. I have a list of what I believe are the good, the bads. Um, I have colorings to show you. I have swatches to show you. So let's jump in. The first thing I noticed when I opened the box is I really do like the packaging and the, the time that they put into this um, in the packaging. It is actually um, a hard box, okay? And you have little information on the sides. Here's the back. It actually has sort of like a swatch on top and it is magnetized. See, that is a magnet. So it holds it into place, which I thought was really cool, you know. So I was impressed with the packaging. When you open up the package, you'll find the 120 marker pins on the inside. This is the order that they came in from the company. So they already had them in some semblance of a cool color order, which I found that very impressive. And what you basically do with this when you color, you can store them in this. You just kind of bend this over like this. You open it, you turn this. Here's the little magnetized part and it magnetizes. And then you can put them like this. So it makes a very easy, it's easily to access, you know, when you're coloring. It also lets you see the swatch here, um, which as you see, matches what's there. But something really neat that they did include was a paper to do swatches on. And what you can do with these is when you get your swatch, you can simply put it here. So you actually have the real colors because that is one thing I noticed is that eh, they don't really match my swatches that I took. But it's really neat. Here's the swatches of the 120. And I haven't taped this onto the box yet because, well, I wanted you to be able to see their swatches. So this is kind of, as you can see, pretty different. But that's something I think we're we're pretty well used to. Right? Um Cap colors versus swatches. Honestly, I think cap colors may have came a little closer than their swatches did to matching. 
they're not all perfectly or anything or perfect or anything like that. But I think that the real colors come closer to matching the lids than their swatch did. But okay, so that's how the markers are set up and you get them out. You can put them in, back in after you use the markers. So that's, that's really neat. This is very similar to the layout of the Faber-Castell pit pens. When you get them in the display box, the box is kind of similar to that. So if you're familiar with that, you can get a feel. Now I'm going to show you what I did color with these markers because I want you to see that. And I mean, I think it turned out well. This was colored 100% um, with these Walla Wallows. And I do think it turned out really good. And I just kind of flipped the page and just kind of laid down some more color. This is also the Walla Wallows. The one thing I did notice is there is definite shadowing coming through. And this is fairly decent paper. So there is some shadowing. So you're going to need to be careful if your intent for these is to be for double-sided books. But other than that, I think the colors are really bright and they look they look really good, right? I mean, I think so. So I'm going to show you guys the actual pens. I'm going to pull them out so you can see that and kind of get a feel for that. And then we'll talk about pros, cons, goods, bads, all that kind of happy stuff, happy stuff, happy stuff, happy stuff. Okay, so let me see. I need to grab um, just a couple. <laughs> Let me see. Where's my swatch? Where did I leave my swatch? There we go. Um, let me grab this one, maybe. And this one. Okay. All right. So here are the actual pens. And you have a brush end and a fine end. It is... Um, it shows you which ends the brush, which ends the fine. And here's the brush. And here's your fine. And I, I, I like the way these work. I do. Um, you have the fine tip, which gets you pretty fine. And then you have the brush tip. And that's the one color. And the second. So I colored and, you know, laid things down, like, you know, just to get the feel for the different colors and things. And I mean, I'm, I'm pretty impressed ah, with the way they laid down. Let's do a lid. I did test. You got to understand this is not water paper, so it's definitely not going to be perfect. But I did like the gradient test where I grabbed like this one and just kind of came in just to kind of see what would happen. This isn't really water paper, so you can't expect like huge miracles to take place on this paper. But I mean, it's it's not bad. Um, I'm not sure that the more expensive markers would do really any better. There is a bit of a pull even, you know, if I get some water and just kind of do that, I do get some ink coming out of that. So that tells me that this would do really good on water paper as far as, you know, like pulling. So, I mean, I think that would, would work well. And then, of course, another little test that I like to do when I get these kind of pens is I like to do the touch test where you just kind of touch here. Um, whichever one's on top is going to kind of seep down into whichever one is on bottom. Um, and you can just kind of rub them together and then and then you're back to the normal color. Um, there is a little bit of a transfer on the other one. So if you do that, kind of make sure you clean the brush and then we'll try it this way. So, I mean, this is always something I kind of try with my water brushes because they're supposed to be like so good at this. So yeah, I just kind of put some on the nib. Coloritaville. Oh, I was off screen a little bit. So there you go. So it does um, do that fairly well. And um, yeah, I mean, I like that. Now I'm going to show you, and I'm going to show you with the black brush because that's the black brush marker because that's kind of been the one 
that I've been working with the most when it comes to playing around with these brushes. And, you know, I do use black the least. So if I'm going to mess up um, a brush nib, I would rather do it with black, just to be honest. So I have already written with this. I've actually pushed it down and tried to, you know, mess with those fibers. And it did hold up fairly well, as you can see. So it's still laying down ink wonderfully. And this is basically what I did is I took the brush then it up, then it backwards, and then just kind of, you know, played with it to see what was going to happen. And it does go back fairly well, back to its um, original. And I'm not seeing a lot of damage to the fibers. I mean, there is some separation, but not terrible. And one of the problems that I have had with brush marker, with these types of brush markers in the past, has been that they are not flexible nibs and they're very hard fiber nibs. And when you use those nibs, they kind of just disintegrated if you ever put any pressure on them. So that that was, you know, a big, big, big negative um, on the older brushers, brushes. So I thought that was very positive with these. So again, you know, this is the swatch that you're looking at. I'll pull a little closer so you guys can get a better Look at the colors that come in the sets. Perfect. So these are the colors that you get with the 120. And what I want to do now is just kind of, um, I want to tell you what I personally experienced as the good and um, maybe the not so good. Again, this is what I colored with the marker or with the pens and mark, the pen markers, marker pens, <laughs> the marker pens. Okay, so I made a little list here. Um, the first thing I noticed that I really did love about these is indeed the packaging. I think that the packaging is really nicely um, executed. Sorry about that. Especially for something that's considered, you know, in the budget-friendly range. Um, I like the fact that it, in my opinion, it's very aesthetically pleasing. I believe that it gives you easy storage. You don't need to say, okay, I have 120 of these. Now I need to go out and find something to store them in. So I was very impressed um, with that because, you know, it's a matter of store it and use it. Okay. So um, I did really like that. So I like the fact that they are um, in their own little number orders that you can get individual ones out and use them and then put them back in. So it's easy to keep in order and the storage of that. I do like the fact that they included, you know, a sample swatch, of course, even though it doesn't really match. I did like that it was there. And I do like the fact that they included something that is the absolute perfect size to place on here so you can keep up with your own swatches. Um, if you wanted to, you could skip a line between each one of these and it would take up the whole space. Or what I decided to do was just to here, in case I did decide at some point to change the order of the colors around or, you know, whatnot, I would have that. But I do like that the fact that you can put that on there. I think that's a very good positive thing. So the packaging was the first thing that really struck me as as wonderful compared to a lot of the other brands of these type of markers that are on the market. This next thing that I wanted to talk to you about was, again, these flexible brushes. I'm very impressed with the brush nibs that come on these particular markers. Um, I have used, as I've said, I have purchased other brands and I'm not going to, you know, go throwing brand names around um, today on this video because that's not the purpose, but um, a well-known brand specifically of budget friendly and the nibs were very hard, very hard fiber, very scratchy on the paper. And I did not like that. That is not what I experienced with these. Um, they seem to be um, a lot. I mean, I'm just going to grab any old color here and see, you really don't hear that. On the other brand that I'm speaking of, there was a definite scratch scratch, scratch, scratch sound um, in that. So I do like that. I do like the fact that the fine liners that are on these seem very good and very smooth. Um, you'll hear me complain a lot about fine liners because they're so scratchy. These 
they're just not very scratchy. They go over the paper, in my opinion, very smoothly. So I am impressed with the fine liner tips um, and maybe even more impressed with the fine liner than even the brush, to be honest, um, because it's so hard to find a decent fine liner. At least that's been my experience. Um, the next thing that I'd like to touch base on is that I do like the fact that these have stacking caps. The caps will stack on each end while you're using the marker or pen, whichever you want to call it. So it does stack. This one is a little loose, but it does go in there deeply. So I do like the fact that that's stackable. That's something that we don't find very often um, in a lot of our markers and pens. Okay, so the next thing I would like to touch on is the blendability. As you saw, um, the two colors did go together pretty well. I think it would have went to better together even better on a paper that is more geared towards water-based ink. And the fact that I could do the, you know, so that would be like your gradients. You can get those gradients in there. I also like the tip to tip, which makes doing gradients like this a absolute breeze. And I like the fact that it did do that. Um, the final thing I would like to talk on that I really um, found impressive about these uh, pens, marker pens, marker pens, that's what we'll call them, marker pens, is that they're fairly budget friendly. Um, they are a little more expensive than some of um, the others, but but not terrible, not, not even terrible. So, and to be honest, um, it might even be closely in line with the price now. It's been a while since I bought these type of things, but um, I believe these cost around $39.99, I'm thinking, for the entire 120 set. Give me just a second. I will actually look that up for you on Amazon right now so you know um, the exact price of these right now. Okay, so they are they are $39.99 right now on um, Amazon. And I'm just going to look up. I'm not even going to tell you what I'm looking up. Um but it's just a little comparison um, on price. I can find it real quick. Um, yeah, I'm not finding what I want real quick. I wanted to, I was, No, but I can tell you, and I can't find that, but I can tell you that the brand that I purchased from in the past was about $45. So it is it is pretty in line, and it was only 100 markers instead of the 120. So price point's not bad, and you need to take into account that you're not having to buy a case. You've got a good thing to store these in that'll work great on a desk. Even if you color in a chair, you could sit these on a side table or whatever. They're easy to access. So I think that's really good. So they are fairly budget-friendly, especially if you compare these to, say, the big famous um, names for these type of markers, such as Tombow. And of course, Tombow doesn't have the fine liner. It does have more of a fine point, but not a fine liner. But of course, a 108 count of Tombow is going to run you over $200 probably. And um, same thing with like the Zigs. So yeah, price point, I think they're fairly budget friendly. Okay, so let's talk about the negative things that I found about the markers. And I say this because, I mean, I, I want you to understand that there's always going to be negative to everything. There is no product on the market that I've ever found that is 100% perfect. They all have their drawbacks. And trust me, I would be the one to find them. So I'll share with you what I think. Um, I believe they're a little hard to remove from the case. As you guys probably saw, I'm having to reach in and try to grab these like with the tip of my fingernail and pull them out. So they are a little difficult. For those of you that are familiar with the Faber-Castell pit pens, they have like a little string that hangs down. When you pull the string, each one of these little drawers, drawers that these are in pulls forward. This one pulling forward the most and a little bit, little bit, little bit. So you can get your hand in there um, to actually pull those out. 
I don't know if that would be possible for Walla Walla to add that type of feature to the box because honestly, I think that's going to drive price up. So you have to ask yourself $39.99 or $59.99 because, you know, anytime that a company goes in and spends a lot of money to revamp something, to change something, to make things better, price is going to go up along with that. You can't expect price drops or price stabilization when, you know, you're trying to do that. So for the price point, I think that's okay. But, you know, it is, it can be, <laughs> as you see, a little bit of a pain, especially if you don't have any nail at all. You know, I have a little bit that I'm reaching in there and pulling these with. So that's where I saw some negative the, that, that's really the only bad thing I saw with the packaging. Okay. Um, and next thing that I noticed is there's no names or numbers on the pens. And that, you know, is not necessarily a bad thing. There's not really names and numbers on any of these kinds of pens that I've ever used. Tombow has a number, but not the name. All of Tombow's pens are named, but the name's not on the pen. You do get a number, you know, on the other cheaper brands of these that I've seen there are no numbers or names. So that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I would like to see, um, I always like to see some type of a number on a pen. So they're easy to swatch and to keep up with. Of course, one could argue it being in this case that that's maybe not as necessary, but you know, I think it is because if I have this pen out and this pen out and somehow I need to put them back and I go, oh, I forgot which one came from where. I mean, you see what I'm saying? So I can see the need for at least a number system on the pens. Um, the final thing I saw, and this could honestly just be me, but um, when I was swatching, I, of course, had to swatch all 120. All 120 did come with ink. Both ends do work, so that's really good. Um, I did find one thing negative, and I'm going to show you guys. I believe it's this pen. Please be this pen. Um, I'm trying to remember this from last night. I did have one broken pen. Yes, it's this one. Do you see where that's broken? Um, it's the only one. And the only reason I even noticed that was because when I pulled it out the swatch and I pulled the top off, it all came out on me. So, but other than that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of glue around this plastic here. But this does at least give us an idea what the inside of the pen looks like, which is a neat thing, I think. Um, but yeah, that was the only thing that was wrong with the pens upon arrival. Um, but yeah, they all work. But the one thing I did notice is some are, some seem much more juicier than others. Um, none were dry. Okay. But some did not seem to give me as much color payoff. And I don't know I've tried to figure this out. Um, so I've just kind of labeled this as uniformity. Um, I don't know if I have a hard time believing there's a different brush on some of these markers, but I don't know if it's the brush, if it's the ink, um, if it's the amount of ink or I, I don't know, but there seemed to be a some, some of the pens were not as uniformed as the other, but they all did have ink and they all did work and perform. But um, yeah, that's the, the I, I did see a little bit of a uniformity issue. So to sum everything up, I don't think this is a bad purchase. I think that this would be a good pen set for someone who wants to work with water based pens and markers. Um, as you all know, water, and if you don't know, I'm going to tell you, water based art product has they have an, a mind of their own. They're going to do what they want to do when they want to do them. Um, I believe it is, it's a serious art form to be able to work with water-based product. So um, I, I did feel like I got good coverage and I'm going to show you this picture again, because the one thing I noticed a lot with water-based is just um, lines and streaks and all those types of things. And I wasn't getting a lot of that. And as you see, these are pretty large areas to color in. And I was actually able to use three different types of colors, one to outline and then one to kind of shadow and one to go over the top. So this um, was actually used a lot and there's not a lot of paper damage. So that's a really good thing. So, you know, like I said, in conclusion, I, th I think it's a good set of markers. I was very impressed. And I'm not just saying that because these were sent to me, because I'm telling you, I was very honest with the company that they were going to get a 100% honest review out of me. 
what I can say without any shot of a doubt, these are the best budget friendly um, dual end type pens like this, the ones that look like this, that have fine liner on the end and a brush on this end um, that I've really experienced. Um, far superior to the aforementioned brand that I have worked with before that I kid you not, I started a picture with it and just said, no, I hate these. Um, they've been sitting on my shelf forever. And last night when I finished, actually this morning, I started this last night when I finished this picture up this morning, I thought, okay, let me pull those, uh, that other brand down and use it because I really want to get a fair shake. Maybe I'm a little better at water, uh, water-based products now that I work was in the past. And I want to test that. And I grabbed that pen out and I used it and I got like just two strokes down and I said, uh, yeah, no, no, I'm not even going to waste my time. So these are far superior to that brand. So I will say that. Um, do I think, you know, someone may ask, is this a good alternative to Tombow? No, because it's not Tombow. If you're looking for Tombows, you need to buy Tombows. If you're looking for Zig, you need to buy Zig. Um, you know, I hear people say that about even our alcohol markers. They'll say, how does that compare to Copic? It doesn't. It's not a Copic. So, um, yes. So if you're if you're more of an artist grade type person, you're not going to be very happy with these. If you are looking for budget friendly alternatives to the artist grade type materials, then yes, I think this is a set that could work well for you. Um, personally, I believe if you're just looking for 120 set of fine liners um, in, in a decent color range, that it's these are very well worth the purchase for nothing more than the fine liner. It um, was a very smooth experience to me, and I enjoyed that because I have found that most budget-friendly fine liners are very scratchy. So that is my honest review of the Wallow Wallow 120 counts brush pens. Marker pens. They say pens. I think they're markers. So marker pens. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it was very informative and helped you make um, sound decisions when making purchases of product. Thank you, Walla Walla, for sending these to me to test and review. I truly did enjoy it. Um, this is something that I will keep in my coloring arsenal and use so you guys can see these on future videos where I'll color with them more and we'll get to know them better. Um, again, thanks for coming. If you've subscribed to the channel, thank you so much. We love it. If you have not, please consider subscribing. Um, that way uh, you, and, and of course, ring the bell. You'll be notified as we upload more videos. We have color alongs, color and chats, color sip and chats, reviews, and all kinds of different things. Give us a like, a thumbs up, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of these. If you've tried these, what other brands like this have you tried and what was your opinion um, and things of that nature. I would love to hear from you. So again, I'm going to say this so many times. Thank you. <laughs> um, down in the description, you'll find a link to Walla Walla on Amazon it's where these can be purchased if you're interested. So guys, until next time, peace, love, and happy coloring. Bye, guys.